Hello again. Skating is a popular activity during the holidays, and many Torontonians head down to Nathan Phillips Square this time of year. But one of the city's best kept secrets is the Natrell Rink at Harbourfront Centre. Matthew Smith went down to the lake to check it out. The Harbourfront Centre is lacing up for another winter of ice activities for all ages. Skate culture offers many activities at Harbourfront Centre's Natural Rink, which is Toronto's largest artificially frozen surface. One activity that's become a success over the last few years is the Learn to Skate lessons. Hasina discovered the Learn to Skate lessons through Harbourfront's website last year and signed her four-year-old daughter up for lessons. Yeah, kids these days are very different from, I guess, the way we used to be. They're very into all these things at a very young age. So. Kim Corin has been instructing for seven years and is the longest standing member of the Learn to Skate program. Corin says that Natural Rink's ice surface has the best quality outdoor ice surface in the city. <laughs> it's a lot smoother. It's a lot smoother. It's not, it doesn't crackle as much when you go over top. They really care about their ice surface and they, you'll notice they resurface more often. So when you go somewhere else and you're skating around, it's very choppy and it's like skating on a pond. Whereas here, it looks like you're skating on a pond, but you're actually skating on beautifully maintained ice. Eugene has been working at Harbourfront Centre for three years, where he teaches the Learn to Skate program for children. Within that time, Eugene has observed the program grow from 200 to 1,000 people. I think it's a combination of factors, you know, people moving into the area. Uh, we have a lot of people who are new to the country. Um, a lot of people who are like, hey, you know, I have this great rink across the street from me. Why don't I uh, learn how to take advantage of it? Dan, an avid skater, looks forward to skating on the natural rink six times a week. I find the atmosphere around here and the music and the people are just, I don't know what you call it, A1, I guess. Um, I love winter and I love the outdoors. Dan says that Natural Rink is the best rink in Toronto for outdoor pleasure skating since there's a variety of turns per lap. All the people here are, are friendly and they're, we all have, uh, I guess, a, a common purpose and that is to be outdoors and enjoy the fresh air and, and, and exercise and, I guess, socializing. Whether you're 4 or 70, the natural rink here at Harborfront Centre is the place to be. For Humber News, I'm Matthew Smith. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Solstice. With the holidays in full swing in a country as diverse as Canada, what's the most popular way to give each other season's greetings? We sent Aaron Best to find out. There's a little more cheer in the air as Christmas approaches. Warm season's greetings remind you that a festive time with family and friends is almost here. But this raises the question, happy holidays, season's greetings, and Merry Christmas. Which greeting is correct or most popular in a multicultural Toronto? Uh, I'll say Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas! And happy Holidays, have a good Christmas. Uh, definitely Merry Christmas. It's Christmas, <laughs> so what else would you say? The surprising thing is how little controversy there is regarding the Christ Center greeting. An Abacus data poll finds that 76% of Canadians prefer Merry Christmas versus another greeting. The same goes for our American neighbours of whom 70% prefer that stores use signs with Merry Christmas. ESL program coordinator at Humber College, Irene Cosmas, says people should be open to the traditional season's greeting. Say Merry Christmas, I don't think there's a problem. I think people should be open and accepting to hearing lots of different ways of saying Merry Christmas. Radio broadcast student at Humber College, Mark Dralick, says instead of Merry Christmas, he says Happy Holidays. Well, I'm Jewish, and I know there's a lot of uh, people that don't celebrate Hanukkah, and there's a lot of people that do celebrate Christmas, so to generalize, I say Happy Holidays, whether I don't know if they're Jewish or if they're, or if they're Christian and they celebrate Christmas, so I just go play it safe and wish everyone a Happy Holiday. Humber College interfaith chaplain Len Thomas says he says Merry Christmas, but sees why some people would rather avoid it. Perhaps they feel put upon uh, by those who are Christians or they, maybe they feel overwhelmed and they're trying to respond and maybe get a little breathing space and step back and so happy holidays is a comfortable medium. Pastor Tony Zegfeld, a Christian missionary here in Toronto, says there is no shame in using a traditional Merry Christmas. Muslims celebrate uh, Eid, right? They say Mubarak Eid, Blessed Eid, right? 
or Diwali, Happy Diwali. They use their names. We don't say to them, Happy Holidays. Um, so what's the issue? Whatever you're greeting, try to spread a little joy this Christmas. For Humber News, I'm Aaron Best. Forget, it, forget about heading to the North Pole to deck the halls. Jolly old St. Nick graced the city with his presence as he made his way down the streets of Toronto. Catherine DeVaris was on the scene to cover Toronto's 107th Santa Claus Parade. What's red, white and walked all over? Toronto for the 107th annual Santa Claus Parade. Horses, clowns and even Rob Ford were part of the holiday cheer this year, waving to what was one of the largest crowds in attendance. It was rumored that Santa was going to bring Mrs. Claus for the first time ever. Eileen Cruff has the scoop. I, I heard Santa Claus on the radio this morning. He said she, she, keep, she keeps complaining that he doesn't take her anywhere. The swan led the flock of 26 floats, followed by crowd favorites, including the Muppets, Looney Tunes, and of course, the Penguins from Happy Feet. The parade has evolved since its debut in 1913, when Santa was pulled through the streets of the city by real reindeer. Now it takes more than 3,000 dedicated volunteers joining the celebration every year, whether it be behind the scenes or dressed up like Christmas trees. The energy was high and the flags even higher as children in the crowd sang their favorite tunes along with the marching bands. All the way, oh what fun it is to ride and run or open sleigh, hey! Thankfully nobody was injured as the underage drivers tore up the 6.2 kilometer course and cheerleaders were tossed high into the air, giving everyone a good show. Marching bands across Ontario played crowd favorites and showcased some hidden talents. The parade is broadcast across North America and draws crowds young and old. We want Dozens of bands line the streets of Toronto today as part of this annual Santa Claus parade. The marching I can do, the music, not so much. As always, the best float was saved for last. Jolly old St. Nick did not disappoint as he left the crowd smiling. Catherine DeVaris, Humber News. That's all for this special edition of Humber News. Thanks for tuning in this season. I'm Reem Jazar. And I'm Kathleen Finley. Humber News is written and produced by journalism students at the North Campus. You can also catch us online at youtube.com slash Humber News. On behalf of all of us here, we wish you a safe winter break and a happy new year. <laughs>